Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, just a few announcements. The children's Christmas program will be next Sunday. Uh, and today, after church, and next Sunday after church, Erin will be doing an uh, AED demonstration. It's a little bit different, she said, than the other one. So if you want to go downstairs, she'll be down there. Just let her know. And it's cheer box time again. If you can have your items for the cheer boxes here by Tuesday the 13th in the basement, uh, the ladies will pack those up on Wednesday at noon. Uh, let's see. You can still donate for the homeless in the box near the side door downstairs. And there are some addresses in your bulletin um, of some people uh, that uh, could use a card, Marilyn, Nancy, Larry, and Carla. And we still need volunteers to help run off uh, copies of the bulletins every other month. You can contact Beth. Her number's in the bulletin. And Christmas Eve services will be at 7 p.m. Saturday evening on the 24th. Christmas worship service uh, will be at 10.30. There will be no Sunday school that day. That's it for I have for the announcements. You can check your bulletin. There's a calendar in there of uh, times and for different things that will be going on. Good morning. It's great to see you here, and if you're worshiping with us online, it's great to have you with us as well, making sure you're staying safe. If you're recovering from anything, uh, we're praying for you, and we're glad to have you with us in any way, shape, or form. I'm going to put in another plug for next week's service for the kids are going to be uh, doing a presentation up here. Now, I was, would like, for the kids' sake, if you've ever been a part of one of those as a child 
in this church or any other church, raise your hand if you've ever been part of like a, a Christmas play. All right, kids, look around. Look at how many adults have been a part of that, okay? So you're just now getting that. And I joked with Elaine this morning, I found out that the title of this Christmas play is the title of every other Christmas play I've seen in any church, uh, which is called At This Point in Time, uh, Whatever We Can Make Work Is What Will Get Done. So uh, it'll be great. Uh, the kids will be amazing, and God always smiles at these. So I invite the congregation to stand. As we begin our service with our invocation, our confession, and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will continue uh, first with three verses, the first three verses of Light One Candle to Watch Our Messiah, the lighting of our next candle on our wreath, and then we will move into our gathering hymn, which is in our blue hymnal, hymn number 633, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <clears throat> Let us pray. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesties of Caramel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense, and he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap for joy like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless shall sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackal shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from James chapter 5, verse 7 through 10. Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See the judges standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to stand for the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, 
I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. I invite, hopefully, all those kids I saw at practice to come on up. Almost didn't recognize you without your uh, costumes and hat. Did you miss me one time? Did I miss you? When, do I miss you when you're not here? I definitely miss you when you're not here. I do. That's why I have the clothes. Yeah, yeah, it happens. It happens. A lot of people right around now. So how are you guys doing today? Good. Good. All right. Fantastic. So before we get into the finding where we need to find, because I think they'll be pretty easy today. Um, Here's what I need to tell you. Mm -hmm. You're going to the zoo today? Do you know Santa or not? I do. I do know Santa. Yes. Yes. Why? Do you think he told me you've been good or bad? Good. Good? I see that smile on your face, though, as you say that. Yes. So, yeah, what else? Can I ask you a question? Or can I tell you something? I can tell you something. I'm going to tell all, everybody, but you can listen too. So normally in church, this goes for next week, normally in church, yeah. your parents want you to be what? As far as volume goes, they want you to be quiet. But when you're up here for the play next week, you need to be loud. Loud. Because we want everybody to hear. Yeah. So you need to be loud. You can almost not be too loud. And you be loud and slow. But I be loud in my house. You are loud at your house, which is why I know you can be loud here. All right? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Um, what animal are you looking forward uh, to seeing at the zoo? No, no, no. You focus. I want you to focus on one. No. What of a walkie-talkie? You see, <laughs> Mr. Jared, you know, you, know, that's, you know that guy. You see him? I have a walkie-talkie because he and I have conversations during the service. Uh, just why other people are doing other stuff, we talk to each other and <laughs> tell jokes and all why kinds of... Why do I wear glasses? Because uh, I can't see that well. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm bald. Just in case you were going to ask that next. Yeah, I just am. All right. Where Genetics. Do Where do I live? Uh, I feel like these are getting a little more personal as we go along. <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable answering that. All right. So, do you drive? Your house is in Worcester? I'm a little bit away from there, okay? So, now, if I were to ask you all, if I were to ask you all to find Mary and Joseph and the donkey like we've been doing for weeks a now. A donkey, I know, it is crazy. You already found them. You were echoing. They do go E-O. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do have my tree up, yeah. Um, it was hard to fit that in my car because that's a pretty big tree. Well, it's bigger than mine. It's bigger than yours? Can I, bu can I buy it? Yeah, you can buy it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about it after the service, all right? So here's what's difficult is because you're not here every week, I don't know how much to prepare no, for because no, like sometimes no, I prepare I a lot no, I and then you're here and then there's no point to me preparing a lot and then other times... I don't prepare as much and you're not here, and then I'm like, what am I going to fill the time with? You go to school now. Okay. Did you know that there are other kids sitting up here with you? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So they're up there. Why do you think Mary and Joseph and the donkey are up there today? Do you want to take a guess, Dominic? So good they are. So good they're taking a nap. <laughs> they're taking a nap? Yes. That's one answer. We're moving them closer to the manger. Yeah. So like, oh, but how, where are they? Keep go, you got it. You just got to push through it. Where's Aaron? Because with, like, with our play, the lighting is out. Okay, we're rehearsing good today. 
Yeah. That was amazing. Yes. Um, so they move closer. Yeah, it's Rowan. You want to try it out here? Get closer to Bethlehem so Mary can have her baby. That's good. Anybody else want to take a guess? Why I would put them right there? You want to take a guess? Um, um, take your time. I'm, I'm thinking, are you a best son? Who, yeah. Yeah, that's what we talk in the walkie talkies. Because we're best friends. So, I will tell... Yeah, Elise. Uh, they told us to get closer to Pam's house. So Joseph could get place closer to pay his tax and for the census. That's a very good memory for the story, yeah. Um, what do your parents do? Taxes. They pay taxes, and what do they do for their job, do you know? I think I heard this. You know what they do? Do they, they count a lot of numbers? Yeah, is that true? Yeah? Okay, so yes, all right. Hello. I'm just going to, if it's okay with you, I'm going to, I'm just going to tell you why they're up there, um, and then we'll say a prayer. Why are you up, why are they up there? Why are they up there? Thank you, that's a great segue. So, they are up there because what I want us to remember is that Jesus, even though he, you don't see him right there with Joseph and Mary and the donkey, that message is always here waiting for us. Why? We don't even really have to go looking for it. Why? We, because God wants us to know it. And so God comes to us. God finds us. And so even though we've been searching for them around the, around the church, um, we need you, to remember that they're right there. The I think switches turn the lights <laughs> off. Yeah. No, they don't. Okay. All right. I notice your grandma's the one who brings you to church now, and I, I want to see your mom, because your mom, I, I don't know, if she, is she yeah, watching right now? Is your mom watching? Say hi, mom. That is not my mom. To the camera back there, say hi, mom. Hi, dad. Hi, mom. All right, can you please repeat a prayer after me? Yes. yes. All right, dear God. Dear God. Help us. To always, remember to always remember that you are right here, that you are right here waiting, for us. waiting for us. We love you. We love you. Amen. Amen. All right, I want to see that same energy next week, okay? All right, go. Yeah. What's amazing is before the service when they were practicing, he was nervous and scared to even come up here. And it's like a 180 between that and, and what happens at the children's message, which is great. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So I need help from somebody out there, at least one person. I need somebody to do me a favor and define the word pe uh, patience. The word patience. So like not like a doctor, patience, but patience. So what does patience mean? Wait. To, <laughs> to wait. Yes, Lennon. To wait. Well done. Full of surprises, buddy. To wait. And so I'm going to share uh, a little story about waiting, about patience. Yeah, what else? No? All right, Grandma said that's enough. Our Grandma said that's enough. But he got it right. Nobody else really spoke up, and he said to wait. So back in our second reading, which is from James chapter 5, it talks about being, being patient. And so... I wanted to make sure that my definition of, of what it means to be patient, to wait, matches what your definition of patience is. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about 
uh, a story that really tested my patience. And I have a feeling based on some conversations I've had with people here that you all had a similar experience. And it's, it's not a fun story. So I'm going to warn you about that right now. So I don't know if any of you remember reading the news, but sometime back in March of 2020, there was this uh, little thing called COVID that started to happen and take more of a hold here among us. And I was serving in, and obviously serving in another congregation at the time. And when we heard about it and we're trying to figure out what's the best way up where I was serving, what's the best way for us to engage with our members? How do we still care for one another? And how do we help keep people safe while still bringing them God's message and, and love? And it was difficult for us up there. And I'm assuming it was difficult for you down here as well. And so we, we, leaned heavily on the Senate office to try to figure out, all right, Bishop, what should we be doing? And that was somewhat helpful. And then we also leaned a little bit on the government, what the government was saying and, and what the CDC was saying. And we, were, we just did our best to take all of the different information and figure out a plan of what worked for our people. And we told people when we suspended in-person worship, we said, just be patient. We'll be back in no time. Were we back in no time? See, at first it was easy. It was easy because we thought, all right, give it a couple of months, maybe at the most. That was the middle of March. Definitely by Easter, we'll be back into our church. And people were pretty accommodating, and, and I learned all kinds of new skills, like how to record a worship service from my cell phone and how to edit it all together, and you know, skills that they didn't teach me at seminary. And that ease of it, that patience started to wear a little bit because stuff wasn't moving as fast as we thought it should move. And over the summer, at least for us, over the summer that year, we did resume in-person worship for about a month. And we resumed in-person, in-the-building worship. But the worship was no singing, no communion, no sharing the peace, no talking in the narthex, no sitting by other people that you weren't related to or in the same house of. Everybody in masks, including myself. And it didn't really necessarily feel like the worship we were used to. And then we suspended it again. And the suspension wasn't just difficult as it went on for members of the congregation. It was, it was difficult for me as well. I remember one of our members who was this little ray of sunshine for me, Iris. And she was a little old lady. And she would tell me a joke every week when she came to church. She'd give me a hug, and she would tell me a joke. And during COVID, her health started to fail, not because of COVID, but her health started to fail. And so she was in a nursing home, and because of COVID, no one was allowed inside the nursing home. And at first, I could call her, but then over time, she wasn't doing as well and she couldn't really talk on the phone anymore and I couldn't talk to her and I couldn't see her. And then she passed away. And because she had been in the nursing home where they had a, a chaplain that worked there who was able to see her and, and her family had not been members of the congregation where she had attended, when they scheduled the funeral, they didn't reach out to ask me to preside or speak or do anything. And so for all of us, with our churches, with our families, with work, all of that, with school, our patience was really, really tested. 
And what I realized during that time is that different people have different levels of tolerance for patience. And I could wish or pray that it was a different way, but it's just the way it is. And the thing about patience that the Bible teaches us that's so important that, that it's as if James could have written this letter today because he says, Be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. And then two verses later he says this, because this is tied with patience. And, and I know I experienced it where I used to serve, and I assume you experienced it here. So be patient, therefore, beloved, until the coming of the Lord. Then you skip down to verse 9. It says, Beloved, do not grumble against one another. Grumble. So that you may not be judged. And the problem is, the longer we were expected to be patient, the more and more people got upset and the more grumbling got louder and louder. In addition to the illness of COVID and all the effects that it had, COVID in and of itself is, was horrible. But then the side effects of just what happens in society because of that were horrible as well. And I have not seen one church that was not affected by what happened over those few years. Beloved, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge... God is standing at the doors as an example of suffering and patience, beloved. Look to the prophets. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Patience is not easy. It's not one of my virtues. And the longer I have to be patient with something, the more difficult it becomes to endure. And it can feel like suffering and so when James says, as an example of suffering and patience, what we are called to be, I did think of a little joke in here that I'm going to share with you. For those of you who think you can't be patient, raise your hand if you're a, a fan of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Dear Lord, if you can be a fan of the Cleveland Browns, then you have a limitless supply of patience. But the good news, the grace that I want us to think about and consider to receive, to take with us all of those things, what I want to leave us with today is this. When you think you're having a difficult time being patient, remember how patient God is with us. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand for our hymn of the day, which is in our blue hymnal, hymn number 629, All Earth is Hopeful.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us boldly profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip the global church to magnify your love and peace in every land. We pray for the work of the Lutheran World Federation and ELCA Global Mission. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive lands we have squandered and depleted. Make gardens flourish in cities and neighborhoods. Cleanse polluted air and water so living things may breathe, drink, and praise you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression. Deliver all who are unjustly imprisoned or persecuted. Reconcile nations and peoples in conflict. Help us pray for our enemies. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, or loss, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Strengthen and protect health care workers, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with family and friends. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not happy. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we rejoice with Mary, mother of our Lord, and with all the saints that your mercy endures for all generations. Look with favor on those who have died and lead us to joyfully sing of your everlasting promises. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. night in which you betrayed our Lord Jesus, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Amen.
invite the, congrega the congregation to stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And let us pray. Lord of life and the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is O Little Town of Bethlehem in our green hymnal, hymn number 41. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.